We're at Sebring. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with an old friend, Bill Canino, and we're sitting in an old, new airplane. It's new in the sense that, well, it's got a whole different name now, and it's called the Outback, it says up front. We're going to go look at that. What happened? How come it's the Outback, Bill? Well, we had the previous name and found that it was owned by someone here in the U.S. who asked us to change. So we had a national contest and we'll announce the winners tonight. They've already been notified, but we'll publicly give the uh, new name for both our aircraft at the Llama Dinner this evening. Okay, now both our aircraft. We're sitting in one that's got a great big engine in it, and this is the one you're now calling the Outback. And we're going to go look at the engine, a big 180 horsepower, gutsy, go up fast kind of airplane engine. And then you've got another one that we used to know by another name too. What's it going to be called now? Well, it was previously called the Cub, but it's going to be called the Nomad. The Nomad. And what's different about the Nomad compared to the Outback? Well, the Outback is just a bigger aircraft with a bigger 180 horsepower engine and not a Rotax. Uh, physically, it's a larger aircraft. Okay, so it's not just an airplane with two different kinds of engines. No, no, it's two it's different. It's a completely different airplane two in different the sense airplanes. of its structure and its wings and all that. Yes. And uh, how, how much different? Give us some parameters about that, weights or something. Well, the weights are surprisingly similar, but the uh, aircraft, this aircraft had to be uh, beefed up to handle the loads, both of the engine and the torques during the flight, as well as landings, and sadly crashes, so that uh, deformation of the weight, of that much weight at the front, would protect the occupants. Okay, so, and when did, when did this structure come out? And how many uh, of these are operating? About a year ago, and there are there's about 24 of them okay. flying now. All right, so that's not bad. But what would if a buyer was going? Well, let's see. What do I want to do with the airplane? Which one should I get? How would you advise a buyer? Added on this engine would be you're more towards a traditional aircraft engine that you would find a Lycoming type engine. Uh, if you've been trained on that, or if you want the additional horsepower. Uh, I fly both of them and I'm constantly amazed at how much more horsepower this aircraft has than the other, even though it's carrying over 100 pounds of additional engine weight in the front. Well, nothing like power. I mean, obviously that's been a big success for some guys that have done higher powered airplanes and now you're joining that uh, parade uh, very potently with, with such a thing. And you get the big boy tires on this airplane. We're going to look at that as well. It makes the wheels I, look so I say tiny. They're, they're but cartoon tires. Cartoon tires. Oh, well, that, that's probably a pretty good term because they almost look unreal. So, yeah, cartoon tires, pretty good name. And uh, get us in a price range for these. People have gotten the idea that 180 horsepower light sport is an expensive piece of hardware. $133,000 is the base price that will get you this engine and this airframe. Uh, painted with white or uh, red, your cho white or yellow, your choice. Okay. Uh, there are many, many options to uh, change it to your particular needs, and uh, I just happened to be talking to a customer who who liked the options we had put on here, so we we're working out a uh, an arrangement for him. So he can spend more if he wants, but you can get the big 180 horsepower, ready to fly, uh, ready to fly. That'll give you a stunning performance for 133,000. Uh, that strikes me as a pretty good value for a 180 horsepower airplane. It'll go like crazy. Well, we think it is, and it's also one that uh, gives you plenty of options. You can change any of the gear systems. Uh, there are even pods to put on the belly to carry extra fuel. If you want. Okay, so the name Savage is sort of associated with. The whole batch of yes. these airplanes. They're all Savage Bobber, Savage Nomad, or Savage Outback. And and how many total with the Savage name are operating approximately? Bill? About 400. About 400. Okay, so that's a good solid uh, benchmark of numbers there. Uh, it's out of the Czech Republic, is that correct? Czech Republic and Italy. All okay. of the welding and fitment is done in the Czech Republic, and then the finishing, uh, they're then shipped to Italy, and the finishing ah, okay. is done in Italy. Okay. Well, I think we ought to go have a look at some of the details on the outside of the airplane. All right, let's go forward and open that cowl. All right. So it says right here, Outback. That's the new name. new name. It also refers to the engine here, but there's more about this engine than I knew six months ago. Let's have a look inside and tell me some more, Bill. This is a uh, engine that's manufactured by Titan. It's not uh, a 320 warmed over. It's built as an IO340. Uh, a larger crank, uh, it's been stroked, meaning the compression run of the piston's a little longer to, to get the output to create 180 horsepower. Okay. And yet it still has 2400 power TBO. 
2400 hours and it's going to operate at those uh, rpm numbers that a lot of american pilots are used to if you've flown continental lycoming you're used to 2700 max that's, rpm that's that right. kind of number this is traditional just as any lycoming type engine okay great but the engine has been the engine you've been using on those other airplanes that we've been flying before, but there's one big difference now that didn't used to be in the equation. Is that correct? Yes. Fuel injection? Fuel Tell injection. me a little bit more about that, Bill. Well, we decided uh, to offer all of our aircraft with fuel injection, so it comes standard at that base price of 133 okay. with, with the fuel injection that, system. Okay. That gives you a lot better control over the fuel flow to each cylinder. You'll get more balanced power throughout the engine. and. We intend to offer this as a float aircraft, and one of the problems with uh, carburation is if you're in a high moisture content, ah, such as you're on the water, yeah, sure. we just eliminated carburetor ice. I hadn't really ice. thought about that, but that'd be a big deal there so in uh, water operation. We try to it? think ahead for eliminating things if we possibly can, and it, it is a nice to have it, the injection, but it's also one that offers some benefits and we've really looked at the long-range maintenance of the engine and if, for example we're using automotive sport spark plugs really? which are very inexpensive and you don't gap them you just look at them if they're clean you throw them away and put new ones in those are the kind of things that help the the long-range value of the aircraft and value to the owner because it's the least expensive in addition you can then now use auto fuel with this engine Beautiful. 180 horsepower auto fuel it's it's really a good combination and oil changes, things like that? Oil changes are standard, but we do have a spin-on oil filter that's standard with the, with the base airplane, so it's really easier to change the oil. So instead of taking the oil filter loose and having all that oil gush out, which is typical for a Lycoming-type engine, ah, okay. this traps the oil and you spin it off and just put a new filter on it. Well, it makes it pretty easy then. And, and in the LSA world, an individual can go get some training and do a certain amount of that kind of work himself, right? With 16 hours of training, right, Rainbow Aviation is a good location for So that. a weekend course. You can get a repairman. Basically a weekend course. And then you could do the spark plugs and you could do the oil yes. and, and some of those things yourself. And of course, fueling is even in, Even maintenance on the aircraft. Okay, so auto fuel, auto spark plugs, spin on oil filter, but there's one thing I got to ask you about this 180 horsepower engine because of the experience I've had with some other airplanes that had big engines. In the LSA space, you can't always run them full bore all the time. You can run them hard to take off. I don't have an RPM limitation on the aircraft. Okay. Uh, the current standards allow us to run full power all the time if you so wish. So what can you What can you put inside the airplane? Not quite 500 pounds. Really? Okay, okay. that's a big number. Yeah, though. it's uh, 800 pound, 825 pounds is the base, and then go up to 1300, 1320 or 1430. And how much fuel does the airplane hold? 24 gallons. 24 gallons. Do you have room for some luggage, speaking of which? Yes, there's, uh, well, in the standard plane, there's 45 pound luggage available right behind the co-pilot Okay. Seat, and that's covered with a zipper container and, and a cargo net. Tell me about the tires, these these cartoon tires, as you call them. I, and they do kind of look that way. These cartoon tires are really neat. They make my landings do good. Is that right? <laughs> They're, you don't you don't tend to bounce a lot on these because I mean there's a if you bounce this tire it'd be unusual the tire has very low pressure maybe four to six pounds is normal and so it just kind of absorbs the blow when you exactly get it just deforms you don't roll over a rock you come up to the rock and you envelop it and you continue to go <laughs> you envelop really, the rock the, the tires are fabulous they're made in the U S now these guys do a lot of tires for Alaska pilots. I know, yes, and they get, and they get bigger than this up to thirty-five. Bigger inches. than this one, so I thought I could hide behind this one. I could really hide you behind. Both the of one. us could hide behind a thirty-five <laughs> inch. So what is this size here? This is twenty-nine. Twenty-nine, and there is a thirty-five inch There's tire. A thirty-five. Good heavens. All right, we've been talking here with Bill Canino, and uh, we've gotten a lot of good information from you, Bill. But people always have more questions. Where would you direct us on the web to send people to get even more information about all these range of airplanes? And you can find all of these at savage.aero. Pretty easy. And we'll put it on the screen for people to make it easy. You can find lots more about all kinds of affordable aircraft and affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining Bill and I here at Seabring.